Valley Talk on News Talk 1580 KGAL. And a very good morning. I'm Dave Adams. It's an interesting world we live in. Don't you know? We were just listening to uh, Mark Workhoven's newscast, and we're all interested there about the uh, the bank closing in Sayo. Yeah. And that's, that's too bad. Mm -hmm. You hate to see that. Uh, the bank's been there since, what, 1886, I believe was what he said? I, I, I missed that part. I was talking to But him. it's been there a long, long time. And, of course, that has mm -hmm. a direct impact on Main Street, so that's something that we'll continue to follow. Mark will continue to follow. We'll follow it here on Valley Talk. So there's a lot happening in the world today on all fronts, and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a lot of that today. We've got three parts of the show today. Welcome to Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams. In the studio, once again, we have Robert White, who's with H&R Block, an enrolled tax agent. Enrolled agent, yes. And uh, he's going to be talking about, one of the things he's going to be talking about is health care reform and how it affects taxes. We're going to be talking about that the second part of the show. Uh, first part of the show, we have our average investment guy, John Gibson, in the studios. We're going to be talking about what's going on with Wall Street. Wall Street does not like what they're hearing from um, uh, Washington, D.C., the administration and the Republicans. They've ba basically just drawn a line in the sand in both of them. Uh, regards to debt reduction, um, tying it to, um, you know, are we going to pay the bills or are we going to force... Uh, a debt reduction. We're going to tie them together. We're going to treat them in separate issues. Uh, Obama says he wants to treat them as separate issues, and the Republicans are saying we're not going to kick the can down the road anymore. Uh, Wall Street isn't liking... Um, it kind of reminds me of the Abbott and Costello thing, where it's, I don't know, third base. We're mm -hmm. right back to where we were. We're back to the to the deadlock again. Funny you should say that. They were on When Radio Was, which is a show of ours last night. Abbott yeah. and Costello was. They were. Um but uh, uh, before we start, get started, sure. in the third part of the show, we're going to have Andy Olson, a state representative from um, the mid Willamette Valley. Right this moment happening in Salem, there is the Associated Press Legislative Preview, and that's where the reporters and uh, the members of the legislature get together, and they're going to talk about what... Um, what's on their agenda, what they're looking to do, and what the priorities are, what, what are the issues going to be in this session of the legislature, which started yesterday. Uh, the governor gave his state of the state matches yesterday. We're going to get Andy Olson's uh, reaction to that. And so we'll see what's going on. You know, there's a lot of balls in the air today. So let's start off, first of all, by telling you, welcome to Valley Talk. And uh, we are giving away Quiznos Taste on Us, $10 gift certificate at the end of the show. You can send me an email, dave at kgal.com, or call the station at 926-KGAL or 451-KGAL, and we'll put your name into the hat and draw for that at the end of the show. Hopefully, you will win. Will win. And that's Quiznos Taste on Us. It's uh, good only at the Quiznos in Albany. That's right next to Novak's Restaurant, right next to the former G.I. Joe Sporting Goods location. Thanks to Dale and the crew there. They do a fine job. Very tasty sandwiches. I eat there every day. Mm -hmm. Good, good stuff. So, John... What's going on in Wall Street? They're not too happy, are they? No, you know, it, it, it's like the bank in, in Sio. Probably a credit union will go in there because nature hates a vacuum. Well, the stock market hates a vacuum when it comes to these big policy things. Um, the, the whole argument comes down to we're, we're not cutting anything. We're trying to slow the growth of 8% a year growth of government. So all they're trying to do is slow that growth down. They're not trying to cut a dollar out of any of the budget. So what the market is saying is we all know that we cannot continue to spend way more than we bring in. So if you give us a sense that you guys got that figured out, then we're going to relax and go back to our normal stuff of wheeling and dealing and buying and selling. But we don't have faith right now that the administration is willing to to be of any kind of accommodative stance and so um you know when you get to that point you start to do things outside the box like for example oracle a, a company a, a software company moved all of their dividend payments from 2013 to 2012 and they had to borrow money to do that and it, you know it jocks their books around and stuff like that that's not business. That's like short-term shooting. And that's where we're at right now. So, uh, you know, you have a stock like Apple. It was at $750 a share oh, five weeks ago. It's, at, it's below 500 right now because their suppliers are reporting smaller orders from Apple 
which is indicating that Apple thinks they're going to sell less phones. And so the market hears that, and the floodgates open up. And that's how touchy everything is right now. So if we could just get some uh, accommodative stands on both sides, then the market would calm down. I don't feel that that's going to happen. You know, I've sold, I don't know, I've sold Pepsi, I've sold GE, Citigroup, Microsoft, Google, and I forgot the last one. But, you know, I still have money in the market, but I'm, I'm heading towards real estate and cash because I think that if things continue the way they're going to continue, this economist on Fox Business News said it the best. It's going to work until it doesn't. And our 10-year bond has gone from yielding 1.4 to 1.9. And I don't know if that's because the government's not buying as much of it right now or if that's just the general sense of investors saying we want a little more money for our risk. Now, the bid to, the bid to cover ratio on our bonds is still over uh, three, three points, which means that for every dollar of bonds sold, there were three dollars bidding on that bond. So that's a good sign. When that, when that breaks, that's going to be the key. That's all I can tell you. So if you're 52 like me and you're setting on profits and you don't want to see those profits go away, yeah, you know, think about it. You know, take some profits. If you're 35, I wouldn't care. It's interesting just the dialogue that's going on in Washington, D.C., because in the past you had uh, Republicans and Democrats, and they seem to be able to at least keep the train going. And now it's like people are on both sides are saying, we simply won't budge from our position. I and just, Wall Street yeah. doesn't like that at all. Well, Neither do investors anywhere in the world. There's a general sense, and, and, and <coughs> people who support Obama, I won't, you know. <laughs> even We've got they, an interesting dialogue here, because admit, it, uh, Robert is, supports Obama, and that John doesn't. He seems angry. I mean, I, I really think that the president doesn't like me. I, I think he's angry. Clinton... You know, and I voted for Clinton. I was a Democrat then. Okay. But Clinton, at least, was like jovial and, hey, I'm just having a good time. And, you know, yeah, I'll sign a bill here. I'll sign a bill there. But, you know, I felt like he was kind of on my side. I, I, feel, like, I feel like I'm the enemy. I'm the old, and I'm not rich, but I'm the old white man that when I was in college at Oregon State, I was told was the problem. It's the old, white, rich men that control everything, and there's this big evil conspiracy. And, <laughs> and now I feel like that student is now my president, and he hates me. I, that's just simply how I feel. So you fly the black helicopters? No, I, I, oh, just, okay. I just think that he wants to take everything away that I've earned. That's what I think. Okay. So... Uh, I guess we're my, waiting my we'll, guns we'll today. Wait, uh, well, yeah, that's gonna, that's another thing on the table. Even I'm sure that's going to be discussed in Salem on the state mm -hmm. level, mm -hmm. and they're still we're still waiting, kind of, for direction on what the priorities are going to be. Uh, governor's already talking about. We'll talk about that with Andy Olson, but governor's yeah, yeah. saying that you know we need to control PERS, yeah. the spending there, and um, cap cap to, cap cost of living increases, mm -hmm. and do get some things under control there, or the yeah. cost of education in Oregon is going to be uh, unsustainable. Well, let me let me have one more minute, and we'll turn it over to Robert. Go ahead. Uh, this is a stock show, and we're talking to, to Robert from H&R Block. And as we talk to Robert, you might realize that this is a company you might want to know more about. And so simply by going to yahoo.com and clicking on your finance button, you, you just type in on the Get Quotes square, H&R Block, and it'll even give you a tease and show you the symbol, which is HRB. Uh, and you can click on that and get all the information that you want to know about H&R Block. How many employees they have, who their competitors are, how much cash they have, how much debt they have, all sorts of information. And that will give you an idea of whether or not this might be a stock. Like for me, I'm 52. I want a stable stock. I don't want some volatile stock. Well, H&R Block, just looking at their beta, is a very, uh, very comfortable stock to own. The beta means if it's over one, if the market goes crazy, it's going to go crazier. If it's below one, it means if the stock market goes crazy, this stock will probably withstand that move better than a more volatile mm. stock. So this is a nice, safe stock. And now I think it's a wonderful company. Well, thank you. Robert, <laughs> you work for a wonderful company. I do, actually. Um, and it's uh, <clears throat> well, it's the largest uh, tax 
company in the, in the United States, do more returns than anyone else. Um, and we, we sometimes joke as the tax laws become more and more complicated, that's just guaranteed in, um, employment for us. But uh, that be, uh, aside, it is a wonderful company, and actually, um, locally, we are a franchise. So we are the local offices in this area are, are locally owned. Uh, we're not part of the corporate. Corporate, we represent them, but that's why we're involved with uh, KGAL and other local things because we are locally owned people, and just we, we're here for the community, support the community. Well, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for sharing uh, what we all need to talk about for 2012 taxes going forward to 2013. One of the problems that delaying the tax tables and and all this this uh, dialogue and rhetoric in Washington, D.C. about how to balance the budget, uh, redu reduce the deficit, and uh, what the tax rates are going to be. One of the thing, one of the cans that's been kicked down the road and is happening right now to tax agents is is um, what part of preparing tax returns? The, uh, and uh, that's exactly correct. The, um, the decision wasn't made until January 2nd, officially. I think that was the official signing date. And up to that point, literally, the IRS could not do anything. Everything was on hold because they couldn't assume, you know, as volatile as things are, that this is the way it would be. So once they said, okay, now we know, we have legislation, we can go forward, well, then they have to retool all the computers and all the programs, and because we are more and more electronic filing and e-filing. So the first, um, it, we found out just last week uh, that, the nor well, the normal filing or the normal processing by the IRS when they actually accept returns, professional tax preparers such as ourselves and other very good companies around this area, uh, they can process returns before that, but the IRS will not accept them and normally till the 15th. Well, we were initially told, well, it's going to be the 22nd because of what was going on, all the hoo-ha. And then last week it was delayed till the 30th. So we're still going ahead, we're uh, processing returns, and it's just going to sit in our servers, secure servers. And we joke, then on the 30th, it's sort of like someone's flushing the toilet. toilet. <laughs> you know, it's all going to go whoosh. They're um, flooding in, man. They're flooding in. And, and the other thing is, there's because of the complications, a lot of forms are not available. And again, uh, if you're talking to your various tax preparers, um, that we call the honorable opposition, etc., they'll be able to help you, but they still will not, certain forms will not be ready, which means the IRS will still not accept the returns. Um, a lot of the credit ones, but the biggest one right now that um, has us maybe the most concerned is the, the um, for depreciation and amortization, which is very, people, a lot of people, well, I don't do any of that. Well, it's very simple, Schedule C's, uh, sole proprietors do that. If you have a rental, you are depreciating. If you have um, almost any type of business, or you know, there's, it's that you're depreciating little bits everywhere. Well, no one is going to be able to process those returns until right now. They're saying end of February, possibly the first week of March. So uh, we're really excited about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, that was the, the, the initial thing I wanted to bring up. The kind of the status of the delays, but there's some other things I want to address, too. So there's going to be a lot of work that's going to have to be done in a very short period of time. Yes. <laughs> and the sad thing is, it's the lower income people that that hurts the most, yeah. because they were counting on those January returns. Oh, yes. You know? yes, yes. And it's those, uh, we're, we're letting people know when they come in, uh, this is this, you know, we can process this, or uh, I had one in, just yes, okay, I'm processing it. And then, well, this, the 30th, we'll say it's going to probably go through, or the form, or as soon as the form is available, we'll go ahead and adjust it for you and, um, and go ahead. But it's uh, a lot of people, that's it. A lot of them reach that 15th filing uh, and having their refund by the end of the month. Well, mm -hmm. it's now they're talking, we're saying, normally we used to say 15 days and maybe 21 days before they get that refund. So everything is just down the road. Yeah. Still have to file by April 15th, though. Yes, that's still there. Uh, or, or have an extension. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the IRS is not going to accept it until the 20th? Uh, no, that's in April. Uh, so okay. we're, we're talking right now, most of these are the th January 30th is the when the, the, mm -hmm. they will actually start processing f returns. And can I just clarify one quick thing? When you said a, an extension, you still have to pay the money oh, exactly. on April 15th. Yeah, I don't want anyone to think that they can just... That's an excellent point. Uh, an extension, when someone does an extension on their filing, it's an extension to file, not to pay. So that's they don't like, like not to be paid. That's right. They do. That's exactly right. So okay. 
It's a good point. When we come back from a break, uh, Robert was going to be talking to us about health care reform and how that affects taxes. Are we talking about 2012 taxes or 2013? Or 2013. Both? 2013 taxes. Health care reform, what that looks like on your tax return. We'll mm-hmm. talk about that with uh, Robert White of H&R Block here on Valley Talk in just a moment. You will always get your money's worth, and the food is fresh, original, and tasty at Extapa Family Mexican Restaurant in Lebanon. Their fresh Mexican cuisine can be enjoyed in their colorful new restaurant on the same convenient corner. Fun? Yes. Large portions? Yes. Affordable? Yes. Visit them for lunch or dinner where the parking is convenient and the atmosphere is sweet. Drop in for their daily $3 drink special. Enjoy Extapa Family Mexican Restaurant today at 25 North Main in Lebanon. Banking these days can be pretty impersonal. You've got your big banks, your internet banks, your do-it-yourself banks, and your too-big-to-fail banks. That's why you might be interested in an alternative. Well, I'm at Community Bank. Hello, this is Bill Higby, residential lender. You deserve better service without sacrificing a thing. So if you're feeling underserved, make the switch to the best banking option out there with branches in Albany and Lebanon. Well, I'm at Community Bank. Service like no other. We promise. Member FDIC... Equal housing lender. Join me, the m and Kid Mike Mason, for a live remote broadcast during Truck Month from Mark Thomas Motors this Friday, 11 to 1 p.m. Great prizes and lots of special deals on the best cars and trucks on the road today. So join me, the m and Kid Mike Mason, for a live remote broadcast during Truck Month from Mark Thomas Motors this Friday, 11 to 1 p.m. on K-Show Radio. We know what you're looking for. Mark Thomas Motors, buy and more. Do you suffer from bleeding gums, loose teeth, or bad breath? Dr. Dennis Clark can help. With gently applied laser light, bacteria killed and diseased tissue removed, which means less inflammation and a fast, comfortable return to firmer teeth and a normal routine. Dr. Clark has been gently caring for his Mid-Valley patients for 25 years. Hello, this is Dr. Dennis Clark. We do offer a full range of services, smile makeovers, oral surgery, and Invisalign wireless braces. But you don't have to leave your favorite dentist to get this amazing solution to your gum problem. I will gladly work with your dentist to help you with your gum problem without changing dentists. Dr. Clark's skillful use of laser periodontal therapy will dramatically help. Bleeding gums heal, loose teeth tighten, the bone even grows back. For a free consultation about the no-cut, no-sew, no-fear solution for infected gums, loose teeth, and bad breath, call the laser dentist. Dr. Dennis Clark in Lebanon at 451-1440. 451-1440. From Lassen RV, we want to say thank you to our customers and friends for helping us have the biggest year ever. But now we have a problem. We don't have any old-age inventory left for a fall clearance sale. So we've decided to put our brand-new models on sale and call it our customer appreciation sale. All of our new RVs are marked down to the right price for your convenience. And if you can't make it in today, that's okay. We're going to hold the price down for you. Lassen RV, where friends send their friends. Lassen RV off I-5 in Albany, exit 233. Home improvement will never be the same once you've heard the money pit. Saturday mornings on Smart Talk 1580. And very good morning. This is Valley Talk. 11.24 is the time. Again, a reminder, we expect to have on the phone at 11.45 this morning, Andy Olson, uh, state representative. We're going to be talking about his take on uh, the governor's state of the state message, what he thinks the priorities for the legislature are going to be. In fact, right this moment in Salem, there's a big meeting going on. It's the uh, Associated Press Legislative Preview. I would be there if I wasn't on the air here. And uh, they're going to be talking with media and uh, the state lawmakers about what the priorities and what the agenda is going to look like for this session. So everybody's in the room right now talking about what the priorities are. Uh, budget, PERS. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if, if um, some kind of gun control legislation comes up. There's some talk on the Internet that some people are going to be pushing that. Uh, it doesn't appear that Governor Kitzhopper is, at least he didn't mention anything about it, I don't believe in his speech yesterday. So he doesn't seem to be a big proponent of that, so that's going to be an interesting issue to watch. Right now, though, Robert White is with H&R Block. He's in our studio. Healthcare reform and how it affects 2013 taxes. What's it look like, Robert? Well, it's an uh, actually there's some advertising going out, and what we're saying, what does healthcare reform have to do with taxes, and it's everything. Um, And actually, it's partially 2012. Um, People have heard, you know, the various names for this. It's also called the individual mandate as a term. Essentially, beginning in 2014, virtually every U.S. citizen and legal resident will be required to have health insurance. 
or there's going to be a tax penalty. So everyone's, everyone will need to be insured, whether it's through an employer, Medicare, Medicaid, or they purchase themselves. That's that's the mandate. It's law. It's got, you know. It's it's, it's settled. It's uh, a lot of people trying to put it off, but the Supreme Court has decided it's the law of the land. Um, and that's so. It's going to and where we come in, or I guess the reason we're tie, people are we're tying in taxes to this is that um, if you need to get coverage of some sort. Um, and you need help, there's going to be exchanges in each state. It's called the state exchange. And literally, so if, uh, it's a pool, if you will. It's where the state has put together as, as, a, as a place where people can go and look for health insurance. And it's possible going through these exchanges that you may be, possibly be able to get a subsidy of some type or assistance. And what that means is that you will get aid in purchasing health care, health insurance. I heard the number was ninety one thousand dollars. It 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 varies. You know, it's they're okay. still negotiating those numbers. Okay, but that's the point. Each the state you're going to have a, a it's called a exchange, state exchange. Well, that the exchanges will take will start in October of two thousand thirteen. The key things they will look at is your household income and your family size, and they'll take this in household income from what year? Two thousand twelve. Okay. That's why we're, we're bringing this out to people right now. Um, so they will take that information and uh, use that goes into the exchange to help determine if you are entitled to subsidy or help or any kind of, you know, that type of things. Um, the, we try to point out, you are not required to use your uh, file of return and do, you know, use those numbers. But, uh, and so people aren't required to do that, but it's going to be the most efficient method. If you have a, a return, you filed a return, that information can go straight to the exchange in October and facilitate it because if you don't supply it through your tax return, you're going to have to supply it some other method of getting this information to the exchange. The exchange will then, again, will use that information to help you determine um, how much they'll help you on uh, purchasing the insurance that must start in 2014. And we don't know how much that's going to cost. Uh, well, we actually, we do can we? do some, uh, in our particular software, we've, uh, which was two weeks ago we discovered, we will be able to give uh, clients a good approximation of what it'll cost. A rough, you know, fairly good approximation. What more importantly was what we'll be able to calculate is what the penalty will be if they don't purchase. Now, the, uh, again, it's, everyone is required. And quite frankly, the first year, the penalty is very low. It's $95 or 1% of your income. Whichever that, is less or greater? Greater. But that, okay. And that will be applied. That'll come out of your tax return. I mean, that'll be, that's be the penalty, but the, it, it almost quadruples the following year. Mm -hmm. It's going to be start out very low because it's a transition year. Um, so that's why we're saying 2012 is important because they will... It's going to be the most efficient way to use those numbers going into the exchange. Are they going to reevaluate your eligibility to the exchange from the previous year's tax return as we go forward? They're not going yes. to continue to use 2012 Correct. as a benchmark. Each year will be reevaluated. Okay. And again, this is the first year. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so why does the DMV come to my <laughs> mind? <laughs> exactly. So it's uh, Oregon has an exchange. Actually, we were one of the first. We were, they, you know, we're kind of ahead of the curve on that. Uh, some states have been putting it off. So it's going to be. But that's this is. I just we want people to be aware that if they don't file a return, they still need to think about having numbers. Uh, just in October, if they're going to go into the exchange, and the, and the exchange is for people who don't have coverage already, Medicare, through an employer, that type of thing. So that, that's the um, why we're letting people know they need to start, we're trying to be proactive, we're trying to educate, let people know what's coming down the road so that in the middle of September they realized, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to have do something. And we're trying to let people know that now. That, that's, the, that's the new one. Boy, and at the same time, businesses are going to look at this health care and go, if we just move everybody to 30 hours a week and eliminate our full-time people, then we don't have to participate. And so you have a higher payroll tax increase, and coming down the road, you're going to have your hours cut. That bodes not well for the stock market because consumer confidence is huge. Mm -hmm. 70% of our economy is what you you and I go do after this show. I'm going to take my great little stepdaughter out to lunch. That's employing people. Mm -hmm. With these new 
you know, if I'm a typical worker, I may not be able to afford that. So what we're going to do is see businesses go to, and we're already seeing the trend there, but businesses going to more part-time employment. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. And uh, we're trying to reduce the cost of doing business if they are required well. And that will force those employees who will not now have coverage through their through government to go through, the, I mean, not through their business, now they'll go through the government. So this is going to wind up being... Huge. It, it will be our health care. Our, our initial numbers we've run on some returns I've already seen is that um, we're giving estimates what they may pay even with possible help. And the, in almost every case, the penalty is much less than if, you know, people are going to elect, oh, I'm better off just paying the penalty mm-hmm. this year than taking coverage. But that's that's the idea. And so and then when you get that big goiter on your neck, you go to the doctor and you get coverage and, and but it's too late. Yeah. So that you know? it's, a, it's a transition. This is really a transition year. Yeah. The other things I want to go into are just some other they're, they're medical related, but they are actually 2013. Um, for example, almost I think everyone is aware that if you itemize and you have medical expenses uh, uh, on your Schedule A, the first 7.5% of your adjusted gross income is subtracted off. You can't count that as a uh, deduction. That's been very consistent. To starting 2013, that number is 10%. Um, so you will, the first 10% of medical expenses will not be counted. Uh, so that's 2013. I'm, what I'm interested in, and maybe uh, Andy Olson will be able to help on this, Oregon is the only state that I'm aware of in the nation that actually, al- if you're 62 and over, allows you to re- take that 7.5% and subtract it from your Oregon income. So, uh, that's, it's huge for Oregon. Uh, last year, there were some measures introduced where they were trying to remove that deduction. And, and you know, people who are 62 and over that have medical expenses... Let That's it. when you have medical That's expenses. They let people know, no, we really like this deduction. Yeah. Um, I'm curious what will happen if we go to, if the federal goes to 10%, are we still going, is the state going to still allow the full 10% then deduction? Mm-hmm. That's, I, it probably hasn't been decided yet. Because budget-wise, that really hurts it's Oregon's a, budget. That's why Oregon's trying to eliminate it. It's a huge right. amount of money. Right. Uh, so, anyway, there were measures in, introduced last year on that. Uh, that's one definite change. 10% deduction for 2013, not 2012, 13 um, l- many people have flexible spending arrangements. Uh, sometimes they have to refer to as cafeteria plans. It's basically where you can take money pre-tax and set it aside and then use it to pay medical bills. Health One, savings account, for yes. example. Uh, no, no, it's different than health savings. It's slightly it? different. Okay. This is slightly different. This is, it's, uh, it's different than that. This is where you just set it aside. It's a wonderful program. Um, and you're, it's through your employer. It has to be through the employer. Um, up till now, there's really, there has not been a cap on that. Most employers use five thousand dollars. Just became an industry standard to use a five thousand dollar cap, meaning the most that an employee can put aside, that is, take out of, not be taxed on for the year, set aside to pay medical bills per employee. Per employee has been the the industry standard has been five thousand. Two thousand thirteen, there is a cap, twenty five hundred dollars. Mm. So, I mean, personally, I used to do over twenty five hundred. Uh, on it and uh, pay my medical bills that way. But so we 2013 we have a cap. Wow. And that's so that's that's new. Uh, another one is the this uh, the next two actually affect a small minority of taxpayers, but there are some that may. And this has to do with the Medicare payroll tax. Um, we talked last week about certain income level effects, and so <laughs> if someone is um, currently everyone pays 1.45 percent unless you're self-employed, it's 2.9, of a pay, it's part of a payroll tax, but it's for Medicare. Uh, 2013, if your income is over 250000 married filing jointly, or 200000 single, the portion of income above those thresholds will have an additional, will have 0.9% additional. Hmm. But it's only the amount above. And that's, again, if your income is in that level. The other one is, uh, and I think you've addressed this, the Medicare investment uh, again, this is where investment income is defined as dividends, net income, dividends, interest, and net capital gain. If you're again, if the same levels, if your income is over 250, the portion of income above 250 will be subject to 3.8 percent on Medicare. Again, it's you have to be first. You have to hit the threshold, and then it's anything above that is at that level, mm-hmm. additional. So. It doesn't affect many people, but does affect... I mean, there are people that we will see that uh, ha- um, addressed. So those are essentially the medical ones that have popped in um, that are changing this week. And I'm going to, you know, in the future, I'll have some other changes we've got going. Um, 
and those types of things. An array of taxes, uh, and then also not only are those increases, but apparently when you go get a uh, uh, MRI or a, whatever those other tests are, you're going to pay a tax on the use of that equipment. Is that correct? Yeah, it's I've you know I haven't seen the specifics, but I've heard that it's mm-hmm. just and it's um, it's, it's I hadn't heard about that one. So let's say. For example, the other day I went in to get a, a checkup and I, I had a CAT scan. So mm-hmm. you will pay a tax on on the use of that equipment. I will pay a tax. Is that the patient yeah. or federal? Is that a, As I understand it, it's in the health care bill, so it'll be federal. There's some. I think some uh, starting 2013. Uh, you know, the, the funny thing is nobody really knows what all this is. I mean, our Constitution is like in, in a little book, like yeah. this size. You know, this health care bill is like huge to over 2,000 pages and I don't think we even know all the tax ramifications yet. I mean, not just federal, but... Well, H&R Block has um, an ad going with regards to this health care reform and the person shows the 2,000 pound book of course, they're saying the person... 2,000 page, not 2,000 pound. Yeah, pound. Um, yeah, page book, and the, and the person said, well, I, you don't have to read it, but I have to know what's in it, and this is why we're talking about Medicare or health care reform now, because it, there are parts that directly affect taxes. Do you have a copy of the bill? No, I don't have a copy of it. No, I, yeah. I don't think I'll plan on reading I go to the Internet, and I have research sites I go to that summarize these things for me. Yeah. And that's why when I started on the, the, the health care reform, suddenly this other page popped up about the other issues that are generally tied with this and that's why oh i better bring this up as well have you spoke to your doctor about it i mean how, how does he no i uh, my, all my surgery was last month i'm in 2012 so i'm fine yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. my doctor's 59 years old and he just said that he's not going to play anymore mm-hmm. and which is sad because he's a great guy birkenstocks my kind of doctor mm-hmm. you know it doesn't touch you doesn't you know how you doing fine okay here's your blood pressure pill <laughs> um but um i i know that he won't be there next year mm-hmm. he's gonna go into shoes yeah yeah, yeah oh, he, sorry. he's yeah. he's gone <laughs> you know medicare is a nightmare you know yeah. I, I feel sorry for anyone over 62 that's you know, too bad medicare is going to be a nightmare let's take a break right now we'll come back more and talk with the uh, robert white um, an enrolled agent with H&R Block, and he's going to be with us twice a month up through April 15th, that day this year that's uh, um, going to be a little different mm-hmm. as the, we're doing with, dealing with a lot of game-changing issues. Andy Olson will be on the phone with us in about, uh, oh, about six, seven minutes. So let's take the break right now, and he's going to be talking about what's going on in the, in the Salem area in regards to the state legislature convening yesterday and what their agenda items are. Back with the Valley Talk in just a moment. The Osgood File, sponsored in part by Stamps.com. Save time, trouble, and money by buying and printing official U.S. postage with your own computer and printer. In a moment, a special offer for you. This is Charles Osgood. The Florida Everglades are beautiful. Deceptively so, says alligator Ron Bergeron, whose family has lived there for more than a century. I've been on this island for about 65 years. You know, when you spend your whole life in the environment, you learn every square inch of the beautiful Everglades. Our CBS News colleague Anna Warner was there recently. These fields of sawgrass and marshy woods are also home to 68 threatened or endangered species. Birds, hundreds of alligators, and something you can't see, tens of thousands of Burmese pythons. Nobody loves them. The snakes are foreign predators, devouring the native animals that belong here. Coming up, what sounds for all the world like a TV reality show, The Python Challenge. If you haven't heard yet, postage rates are going up again. You know how crowded the post office gets whenever that happens. So do what I do. Use stamps.com. Buy and print official U.S. postage right from your own desk using your own computer and printer. Whenever postage rates change, stamps.com updates them automatically for you without charging you a fee the way those postage meter companies do. So you'll always get the exact postage you need for any letter or package the instant you need it. You'll never have to go to the post office again. That's why I've used Stamps.com in my office for years now. Try it yourself. You'll see how easy and convenient it is. Right now, Stamps.com has a special offer since you listen to the Osgood file. It's a no-risk trial plus a $110 bonus that includes a digital scale and up to $55 in free postage. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the home page, and type in my last name, Osgood, O-S-G-O-O-D. That's Stamps.com and enter Osgood. 
Alligator Ron Bergeron was telling Anna Warner about these Burmese pythons that the Everglades are overrun with. They can eat bears, you say? Even panthers? Mm -hmm. Deer? Deer, hogs, and smaller animals. Which is why on Saturday, the state of Florida kicked off what it calls the Python Challenge, a month-long snake hunt with prizes for those who catch and kill pythons. 1,000 people have signed up, most of them amateurs, like Sean and Kate Hicks of Kingsland, Georgia. We have zero experience, zero hunting experience. I've never killed anything ever. We'll see. Sounds sort of dangerous to me, Anna. Officials admit the snakes can be dangerous and inexperienced hunters need to be cautious. So you don't want the animal to wrap around your torso? No, I would think not. The hunt won't eliminate the python problem, but it's a start. The Osgood File. This is Charles Osgood on the CBS Radio Network. Panic is not a successful investment strategy, but unfortunately, it's often the response of investors when the markets catch them off guard. Hi, I'm Doug Phillips, your Edward Jones financial advisor here in Lebanon. Let's work together to prepare for the market's unpredictable ups and downs. We'll focus on a long-term, disciplined approach to investing instead of overreacting to the daily headlines. Stop by my office at 2600 South Main Road in Lebanon or call 541-451-4000 to make a face-to-face -face appointment. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC. Friends, let's stop spending our weekends driving back and forth from some home improvement warehouse. Let's make one trip to Ace, get help quickly from people who know their stuff, and do it all before our second cup of coffee. Get your weekend back. Ace can help you quickly turn your to-do list into a to-dum list. And Economy Supply is your Ace place in the Mid-Valley that can help you with your to-do list. Economy Supply Building Center, where Highway 34 becomes Tangent Street in Levin. Ace, the helpful place. Take the first step. You know you can go at least that far and quickly discover the next step is within your reach. And the next step, join the Y for free now through January 15th. It only takes one small change to make a difference. It takes 21 days to create a habit, so start today. No joining fee now through January 15th at the Mid-Valley YMCA, 3311 Pacific Boulevard, Southwest in Albany. Call now, 541-926-4488. 541-926-4488. Online at ymcaalbany.org. Science and Common Sense. Dr. Bill Wattenberg will surprise you Sunday nights live on Smart Talk 1580. This is Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams. Glad you're with us today. We're talking about taxes, uh, what's going on uh, with your taxes in 2012, 2013 with Robert White, who is with H&R Block. We've been spending some time talking about health care reform, how that looks going into 2013, and on so many different fronts, uh, things that's a game changer. Very mm -hmm. much is. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, th there are a lot of things going on, and we are aware of that. And I'd recommend people, um, if you already have a someone you work with, um, talk to them. I mean, of course, we'd love you to come and talk to H&R Block, but I'm also a member of the Oregon Association of Tax Consultants, and we have our monthly meeting, and last week the topic of the meeting was, boy, are we have a, a can of worms this year. That's that's a summary. Uh, the, uh, so, do you take your sleeper bag to the office or what? <laughs> well, it, we meet once a month, and the, the so it's it's association tax consultants, and we uh, we rotate between Corvallis, um, Albany, and Lebanon. And so, last week we were here in Albany, and, and the discussion was again all these things that are changing. And so, I recommend if you have issues, your professional is aware of that. And go talk to them, um, and I'm talking, and I'm using the term professional, not the people that uh, that volunteer like AARP or anything like that. They're they're free, and you're getting what you paid for. But go to the professionals, and they they will give you some um, help. Okay. Yeah, I mean my 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 lady Dolores Hanson, she's a wonderful lady down in Myrtle Creek. Three hundred and fifty bucks, I think it is a year. I my only thing to her is I just say Dolores, keep me out of jail. <laughs> and uh, she does. She, you know, it's a long form. There's estimates, stuff like that. Like today, I have to pay taxes because my mm -hmm. income is, oh, yeah. is passive. So today's a tax day for me. Tell you what, guys, why don't you put on your headphones? Robert, put on your headphones and um, John Gibson. We have on the phone line with us Andy Olson. Andy, I know you. I know you're very, very busy right now. Uh, thank you for taking time to talk to us on Valley Talk today. Uh, first of all, what's going on right now in Salem? Well, we're having uh, organizational days this week. Uh, yesterday was the opening day where we started the uh, 2013 session, the 77th organ, 
Oregon legislative session that started yesterday. So uh, right now we're kind of getting geared up we'll, for the next two days, and then what we'll do is uh, Dave uh, then stop and take a break for about a week and a half, and then hit the ground running really hard uh, February fourth. So many things on the plate right now. Uh, nationwide, statewide, gun control, budgets, taxes, so on and so forth. What's rising to the top? Well, right now, uh, probably one of the key issues that's rising to the top happens to be PERS. Uh, that that seems to be the, the critical piece that uh, the governor addressed yesterday at length. And, uh, I mean, you know, Oregon, I think, honestly, what it boils down to it, when you, you talk to a lot of the Oregonians uh, around the state, uh, voters believe that we should be doing something with passing some type of significant long-term PERS reform. And the governor's been pushing toward the issue and the driving it with his assumption and his recommended budget that, you know, to try to restore school days and protect other services as a result of doing that. Do you think the governor's proposal is enough? What would you like to see done in PERS? <laughs> well, I, th I think there's a couple of little things that we could be doing there, obviously. I think one of the things that we could be looking at is uh, giving school districts as well as the uh, bargaining units the opportunity to uh, collectively bargain toward the 6% uh, pickup on PERS for the employer versus, you know, with the employee. I think we can also take a look at the cost of living uh, raise issue as well for the 2% annually. Um, I know that there's been discussion out there to do that uh, retro uh, perspective. Um, I think that that would be challenged in court. I'm pretty sure it would. But, you know, apparently governor's office has felt that that they could be successful in that because they've done the homework there i don't know be specifically with that but that's two areas that you could take a look at another area that they're looking at really hard is the the retirees that have left the state uh, for the nine percent uh, that they continue to receive and not have to pay you know tax on it. So, john gibson's got a question for you john go ahead hi mr yeah. olson hi john uh, how are you i'm fine thanks um and to, to do those things, you're going to have to have the union go along with you. Do you have the teachers' union support? Well, um, John, great question. I'm not, in, you know, I'm not in control right now of the House. Um, and uh, Republicans are sitting back here, and I appreciate a lot of the, the discussion that's been having, kind of the feel that's having uh, through the leadership right now, and both the Senate and the House side for Democrats, that they're they're realizing that we have to work together in order to get a lot of uh, their legislation done, policy done. But they're the ones that are going to make the initial calls. Uh, obviously, you know, they can't do a lot, you know, unless, in fact, we do try to have some efforts working together. Now, the, the Democrats have a slight lead in the Senate, but it's still even the split in the House, right? Yeah, you have a 34-26 uh, split over on the House side, and remain the same, 16-14 uh, over on the House side. Okay. So it's still 30-30 in the House? No, no. It is a 34-26 uh, to 26 difference. So you have uh, 34 Democrats, 26 Republicans. We also have in the studio today uh, Robert White. Um, he's with the H&R Block, and Robert had a question for you. This is a tax question. Uh, let's, let's see... Robert, go ahead. You've got a question about what's going on in and Oregon. First, I want to thank you for your service. You're actually one of my representatives. But anyway. <laughs> oh, thanks, Robert. Okay. Uh, the question uh. is, last year there was uh, a measure. This has to do with the uh, medical deduction that people 62 and over can take uh, on the state of Oregon. I think we're the only state left that allows that. Um, and there was a measure introduced last year, um, and it didn't get out of committee, I believe. And I was just curious if you've heard if they're going. That's going to be reintroduced again this year. And if so, it, that addressed the seven and a half percent amount that's not allowed on the federal. And for 2013, or uh, the federal has gone to ten percent. So I'm just curious the ra potential ramifications that will be on the state. You know, first of all, Robert, I have not heard if that that concept is going to be reintroduced right now given with especially with what you know the feds are doing with the 10 percent um i i would not be surprised that you do not see some type of a form for the medical deduction issue you know to surface again so you know that 
I can do some homework on that, but I have not heard anything more other than that. Okay, thank you. I, I know it's a significant amount of money that's not reaching yeah. the state because of that. <laughs> yes. Uh, Andy, got a question for you. In regards to uh, the governor was talking about job creation, and uh, did you hear his speech yesterday or have read it yet? I did. Oh, yeah, yeah. I sat, sat in there on that. Uh, it was rather interesting. And he wants to uh, talk about the Oregon business plan, uh, wanting to create 25,000 jobs per year through 2020. You think we're going to be able to do that? Well, we've, that is uh, an issue that we, you know, obviously... I, I think probably the best way to do that, um, to say respond to that, Dave, is that I, I believe that where the governor is wanting to go is the right direction. I, I mean, with the intent and the heart that he has on wanting to do something and identify a specific date out there. I can't help but plug in with knowing what we had tried to introduce uh, last, last session with creating you know, 50,000 jobs uh, in five years. And there was a love, I mean, there were seven bills that were impacted by you making that happen as an avenue. Those, all those bills had been vetted, had been worked, legislative uh, revenue had worked with us to crunch the numbers to make sure we were accurate with those. Those were all family wage jobs. Um, none of that happened. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm just using that as a measurement for what the governor is wanting to try to do, you know, by t 2020. And I, I'm just, you know, I'm happy that he's wanting to move there. He's having that discussion. I'm struggling with whether or not that occurs. So, obviously, everybody wants to do the same thing, create jobs in the state of Oregon. It appears to me, just looking from the outside, that the ways to do it, obviously, are a difference between the Democratic and the Republicans. Uh, Am I reading that right? I uh, yeah. There's clearly two different uh, ideologies on how to get to that you know that line or that level. I mean, of what we want for economic growth and job creation. What is the talk among uh, the GOP circles as far as okay, folks? Here's the reality of what we have in the breakdown and you know blue versus red in the uh, in the state house in Salem. How are we going to move forward and create these jobs? What does the GOP want to see happen? And what well, are you going to work towards? Well, I mean, we're going to continue to push what we want for jobs. Uh, with the idea for harvesting timber, that makes sense. Uh, getting out there for water rights, uh, especially in the Columbia Basin, as it's Eastern Oregon, that would create a, just thousands of jobs over that way. Um, we, we want to continue to you know, work along the line of helping the families uh, increase where they're at. Just a simple little thing like the idea along um, your trades jobs, getting them uh, boosted again. Uh, those are just simple things that could happen immediately. Um, we will continue to harp on that. We will continue to, you know, move toward those kind of things. And occasionally, uh, you know, I think, you know, the Democrats start ringing and hearing that. Okay. We'll have more with Andy Olson here in just a moment. John Gibson has a question for you. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back with Andy Olson here on Valley Talk. Going out to lunch at a nice restaurant can be expensive, and the big portions put you more in the mood for a nap than a productive afternoon. Mama's Fine Italian to the Rescue. The small appetite senior menu is just right. Anyone and everyone is invited to order from the Light Appetites menu for lunch from 11 to 4 p.m. with tasty entrees beginning at only $3.95. Why go hungry or go anywhere else for lunch? Eat healthy, eat light at Mama's. Close Sunday and Monday, so make the most of Tuesday through Friday and join your friends at Mama's for lunch. Dinner only on Saturday. Mama's features charbroiled steaks every day. Make reservations for dinner or pick up a bottle of fine wine. Seating is limited, so please call for reservations. 541-451-5050. That's 451-5050. Mama's Fine Italian and Wine Shop. On West Oak, between Main and 2nd in Lebanon. Across from the Big Blue Napa Auto Parts Building. Because Susan switched to GEICO and saved hundreds of dollars on car insurance, her retirement account wants to bake her a chocolate cake. But it can't. It's a retirement account. It doesn't have the upper body strength to lift a cake pan into an oven. 
Switch to GEICO, and every time you see the savings, you'll know your retirement account wants to bake you a chocolate cake. But remember, it can't. It's a retirement account. It is, however, happy that you're saving money. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Ever thought you were getting a free service that turned out to be anything but? And switch. When I do my taxes online, I use TaxAct.com. TaxAct.com. Their code is like mine. Integrity. They mean what they say. Simplicity. It's fast and easy. Value. It's free for all e-fileable federal forms. Free, free, free. TaxAct.com. It's how we act. TaxAct.com. The Mennonite Village in-home care program has another happy client. Here's John. My name is John Locke. I live in Corvallis with my wife, and we just celebrate our 48th uh, wedding anniversary. Uh, her name is Alice. In winter of 2009, she had to have radiation done to her brain, and that has left her immobile, which is the reason I have needed in-home care from the Mennonite group. I have them come for five and a half days per week. Uh, the aides help Alice with her shower, they prepare lunch, and if I am gone at all in the evening, which isn't very often, but I am gone, uh, they prepare dinner and eat with her. I have been very, very pleased with the professionalism, care, and the concern, and the relationships with both the Mennonite in-home organization, but most importantly with Alice's aides. They do genuinely care for her. Contact Sue Curry for more information at 541-928-2136 or visit MennoniteVillage.org. The Morning Update, weekday mornings on News Talk 1580, KGAL. Thank you very much for being with us on the Valley Talk today. Andy Olson, I know you're very, very busy. Thank you for being with us on the program. During the break, we were talking to Andy. Uh, uh, John Gibson had a very good question, which a question I've got, because I see it every time I go to Bend and see the burnt timber uh, over by the ski resort and that huge fire over there. Are we ever going to do anything? Uh, is, we're talking about short-term jobs. Get in there and clean up the forest. Well, th that's a great idea. Uh, you know, hopefully one of the things that you would like to do is respond to as soon as a fire does occur or uh, as soon as a beetle uh, infiltrate, infiltration occurs where it really diseases the forest and kills the wood uh, occurs. My understanding that you have a two-year window to respond to those things. Uh, if you do not do that within those two years uh, right after an event occurs to the, the timber, then what occurs is you lose the, the, the real viability of the wood itself. So then all you have is wood that starts rotting. Um, would that create jobs? Absolutely. Do we need to get in there and do something with that uh, to prevent uh, further damage should a forest fire occur even greater to that damages the ground even more from what you know your scientists say mm -hmm. yes we do have not seen anything at all to that effect so far uh, coming into this session with that okay we got about 45 seconds left to go with you Andy so if we get to take about 30 seconds what's your view gonna what are we gonna come out of this session with what do you think I think you'll see a little bit of PERS reform I think you'll see some reform when it comes to prison uh, a reform as well for the sentencing guideline structure, uh, not not to the point where it would uh, release uh, violent offenders out. Uh, most definitely need to be listening to what uh, has happened in the state along that line, and where the I believe the district attorneys association is feeling comfortable with and protecting people. But um, also, you'll be seeing something too uh, with some little change ups and. Uh, giving a little bit more support and authority to the school districts. Okay, Andy, thank you very much. We'll look forward to talking to you with, again on the show. I know you're busy. Thank you for taking time with us on Valley Talk. Okay, you guys take care. You do. Bye-bye. Hey, we want to remind you that HR on Block, uh, Robert Wright, is going to be back here February 5th and the 19th of February talking about tax issue questions first and the third Tuesdays of the month. Mark that on your calendar, and we'll see you then. I'm Dave Adams. This is Valley Talk. John Gibson, thank you for being with us. Andy Olson and Robert White. You make it a great day. And let's make some money, okay? Bye. Serving the Mid-Valley for over 50 years. You're listening to News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis.